Welcome once again to this course on introduction to game theory and mechanism design. Uh, these two topics, game theory and mechanism design, we will be studying almost in equal proportion in this course. Uh, and we will see that these two topics are actually complementary to each other. This course will enable you to model a situation where there are multiple individuals who have a possibly conflicting interests. How can we design institutions such that we can satisfy certain good properties? So, Eric Maskin defines mechanism design as an engineering approach to economic theory. Eric Maskin is uh, one of the recipients of the 2007 uh, Nobel Prize in Economic Theory for his contributions to mechanism design. And he defines it in this way. Uh, and uh, quite naturally, mechanism design is indeed an engineering approach. So like any uh, typical engineering uh, courses, there are two components. One component is an analysis component where you are given the system and you are supposed to analyze that system. And the second part will be to synthesize that system. So where you have certain set of objectives uh, that you want to satisfy and you design a system that uh, gives certain desirable outcomes. And that is exactly the way mechanism design works. Uh, we want to design an institution such that in uh, the presence of conflicting interests, you still can satisfy certain good properties. So um, just to uh, make this analog uh, a little more clear, let's say, let's pick the, the, uh, the classic example of circuit analysis and synthesis, which is a core engineering course for electrical engineering. Uh, so, uh, in the circuits, what we have, we have a bunch of resistors, capacitors and in the analysis component, we try to find out what is the voltage or current in uh, any of this piece. Um, now, on the other hand, when we look at the synthesizing part, we are actually trying to design a circuit such that at a certain part of, the, of that circuit, a desirable voltage or a current is, uh, is uh, present. So this is, this is how uh, uh, it works in uh, typical engineering courses. Even uh, from the algorithm design and analysis uh, component, you can think of uh, the, the analysis component only decides uh, how to analyze a given algorithm and to try to find out its complexities. And in the design part, we try to find an algorithm which has a uh, desired complexity. So in game theory, the, the formal setup is we have multiple agents with uh, possibly conflicting uh, objectives and this is what we are going to call as a game. Uh, this will become more clear when we, ex when we discuss examples. Now in the game theory part what we try to do is to find, try to find out the probable outcomes or responses of these players um, and uh, this is going to be the analysis part as we discussed and this is a predictive approach. We are going to predict what happens in this kind of a game. And in the mechanism design component, we actually flip the question. We start with a reasonable outcome and try to design or build the game that yields uh, such uh, reasonable outcomes as a possible outcome. Possible in the sense uh, as the predictive uh, outcome uh, if we analyze that game. And quite uh, naturally, this is the synthesis part and the approach that we are going to take here is more prescriptive. Of course, this will be uh, understood better with an example. So let us uh, discuss about this. Uh, so we are going to discuss a, a game called uh, Neighboring Kingdoms Dilemma, which is uh, quite analogous to the Prisoner's Dilemma, which is quite popular in, in game theory. So suppose there are two kingdoms, A and B, and they have some limited options to invest their wealth. Uh, either they can invest their wealth in agriculture and therefore uh, they can uh, save their people from starvation or they can uh, spend their uh, wealth into warfare. So um, in that way, they can actually attack the other kingdom and have their wealth as their own and they can be richer. And for the timing, let us just assume that they can uh, invest wealth only in one of them and uh, cannot distribute their wealth uh, among this. Now what uh, one can immediately see is that the final outcome that we are going to uh, predict in this is not dependent alone on the on one of the kingdoms. It depends on the action that has been picked by both these kingdoms together. So for instance, if one kingdom uh, decides to go for a war, the other uh, chooses to agriculture, um, then the, the warfare, the kingdom which chose to uh, go to war, 
they will essentially attack and win without much resistance and therefore the uh, the kingdom who chose agriculture will be at a loss if both of them choose to agriculture of course they can they can both save their uh, people from starvation but uh, if both of them go to war then there will be a fierce battle and that should not give uh, sufficient happiness or satisfaction to both these countries. So what happens in this case? So we can represent this uh, situation in the form of a matrix and put some numbers. So let's say on the, uh, on the rows, we are going to represent the two possible options that uh, Kingdom A has. One is agriculture, the other is war. And similarly on the columns, uh, we represent the two uh, possibilities. Uh, which are going to call as actions, possible actions for uh, Kingdom B. Uh, now, uh, in this, uh, in each of these cells, what we are going to uh, write is essentially a tuple uh, of two numbers. The first number represents the payoff. So we are going to call these numbers as the payoff of player A, and this is the payoff of player B. And uh, these numbers just represent how happy they are. The higher these numbers are, the more happy uh, this uh, kingdom will be. Now, notice uh, something about this number. So, what we said is that if both of these uh, kingdoms choose to agriculture, then both of them will get some amount of uh, payoff, which is uh, quite large, 5 and 5. Now, once B chooses uh, agriculture and A chooses war, in that case, B, A, A can attack the kingdom B and therefore can actually get a higher payoff. Of course, they will have the land uh, and uh, the, the wealth of, uh, uh, of their own. They will also get the same thing for the other country and also uh, their agricultural produce. So may, they will be happier uh, than they were before. On the other hand, uh, player B is actually losing everything. So their utility goes down to uh, zero and the payoff goes down to zero and similarly the opposite thing happens when A chooses to go to agriculture and B chooses to uh, warfare but if both of them are uh, actually uh, choosing to go for war in that case what will happen is uh, both these countries will be successfully defending uh, each other but they won't have any wealth left for their own agriculture uh, but still, since they have uh, saved their own people and possibly their land, they get some small amount of payoff, one and one. So that is the assumption. These numbers actually represent how, how uh, their payoffs are going to be. Now, if we, if we ask what is a more reasonable outcome uh, or more reasonable action to choose for each of these players, given that they cannot communicate with each other, uh, typically uh, in, in such diplomacy you cannot communicate with each other and take a collective decision because uh, there is always a reason for one of the uh, players to not follow that, that contract. So you can see that if uh, player B, so let us uh, look at this uh, game. So this is a game matrix as we will call it. Um, in this game, if uh, we look at from the from the point of view of player A, uh, suppose player B is uh, picking this action of agriculture, then it is clear that uh, player A should pick war because that is giving him a higher payoff than what he was getting here. So this, this first entry is the, uh, the payoff of player A, therefore it is increasing in this direction. If the other player, player B is choosing war, then what should player A do? Again, we can see that uh, this payoff is smaller than this payoff here. So therefore, again, player A should choose war. So it means that irrespective of what player B does, player A should always pick war if he wants to maximize his, uh, his uh, payoff. Similarly, this game is very symmetric. You can see that this number is smaller than this number here and this number is smaller than here, this here. So even when player A uh, chooses either agriculture or war, player B's best response will be to choose war. So you can think of that this action profile, as we will call it, uh, war comma war, both these players choosing war, is some sort, sort of a reasonable outcome which will we can call something like an equilibrium nobody has any reason to deviate from it because the moment it deviates it is going to get less payoff so uh, it's clear that uh, both these players will actually go to war 
the irony is that uh, even though they could have collectively got uh, could have got a better uh, payoff by choosing agriculture to each other the personal greed of increasing their payoff might actually lead uh, to a situation where both actually are choosing uh, an outcome which is uh, worse for both of them. So formally speaking, the game as we uh, represented in this matrix is a formal representation of the strategic interaction between multiple agents and we are going to call them as players. And the choices that are available to these players are called their actions and the mapping from the state of the game, that state of the game to the set of actions is called the strategy. So we'll make these uh, definitions much more formal later. So the things that, you, that are shown on red is essentially some keywords which we'll be using multiple times uh, in this course. And also depending on the context, uh, the games can be represented in many ways. It can be represented in normal form, in extensive form. Uh, there are repeated games or stochastic games, even though we will be discussing only the first two, normal form and extensive form games in this course. Game theory also comes with uh, certain assumptions. So since we are going to do a formal study, we are going to also assume uh, the, uh, the models of the players. So we are going to assume that these players are rational and intelligent. So what does these two terms mean? Rationality means that it picks, the player picks their actions to achieve the most desired outcome or uh, you can think of in the, in the example that we discussed, uh, they pick the, the actions such that they maximize their own payoff. So that is rationality. What intelligence says is that uh, the, the player is not just uh, trying to maximize their uh, payoff. Uh, in in some uh, uh, one-dimensional way. It also thinks about the other players, what the other players can do. Uh, so it knows completely the rules of the game and uh, they can also assume that the other players who are also playing against them are also rational and intelligent. And therefore, picking an action which is optimal should be something which takes care of the, the rationality and intelligence of the other players. So this point will also become uh, more clear when we talk about, talk more examples. So therefore, all in all, this is a predictive guarantee and uh, uh, this is uh, the, the game theory is only going to provide you uh, the kind of outcomes that we can expect when multiple uh, rational and intelligent players are interacting with each other.